All right, we're ready, we're rolling. So, Rose Styron, why do you think I'm doing this? I think you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> when you were younger, did you envision your life? No. When the 30th person has said to me, you're my role model, and I think, does that mean because I've survived till I was 90 or because I'm still having a good time? My teacher accused me of plagiarism. She thought some grown-up had written my poem. I thought, oh, well, maybe I can be a poet. You took something that was unpleasant and turned it into something pleasant. Bill Styron and I had a fabulous winter together in Rome. So we thought, oh, well, let's get married. But I didn't think it was going to last more than a couple of years. When he was pushing 60, he crashed. The first signs I saw of it were after he wrote Nat Turner. Jimmy Baldwin encouraged me more than anyone else to plunge into that kind of narrative mode. He was so depressed. My book turned him into a far more heroic figure than the actual Nat Turner was, because I gave him human dimension. To whom did he humanize? To the white community? He was contemplating suicide. It was very scary. But he recouped his life, came back, and he had 15 good years. Maybe writing saved him. Jack Kennedy wanted to meet Bill, and so we were invited to the Nobel Prize dinner at the White House. Jackie said, once in a while, we sail to the vineyard when we come up next summer. Would you like to come with us? And after that, they came to our lawn every year. Were you ever scared in any of your Amnesty International missions? Yes, I was. I got myself into a lot of things. What started your interest in human rights? Going to the Soviet Union in 1968 and learning about the gulags. And I was awakened. That's when I became a journalist. You have a kind of animation and good cheer and life force. I have planned to live at least as long as my mother. She decided to hang it up at 102, but I may not. We'll see. <laughs>